Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kira Mack, as always, and delighted you've been able to tune in with us yet again for another show. Now, before we do get into the top trending stories here in the country, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel as always, and hit that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when the next podcast show or whatnot is updated onto the website. Now, if you like listening to us on a podcast player, there's a link down below in the description, and you can hit on that. It'll take you to a website where there's a vast array of podcast players. If you also like listening to a short form version of this, you can check us out on TikTok and there's also a link down below in the description. Now, if you want to support the show, you can do so by buying us a coffee, link down below in the description as well. And you can also become a channel member and all the information is also down in the description because that's where everything is kept. But now we're done and dusted with all that, let's jump into those top stories today. The Kamala community in Phuket is reeling with outrage following the tragic death of a 65-year-old British resident, Zoe Luckett, who was fatally struck by a speeding van running a red light at the main intersection on Saturday night. Despite the van driver's reckless actions causing Miss Luckett's immediate death, local authorities have yet to address the incident publicly. Frustration mounts as Kamala police cite malfunctioning CCTV cameras, refusing footage from nearby businesses and neglecting alcohol testing for the driver. Residents demand justice for Miss Luckett and highlighted the perilous conditions of the main road, now transformed into a high-speed zone for taxis and motorbikes, resulting in multiple fatalities. Urging for immediate traffic control measures such as speed humps and signage, locals emphasize the urgent need to prevent further tragedies. Miss Luckett, a cherished member of the Kamala community, leaves behind a legacy of love and friendship, prompting calls for swift action to ensure the safety of all residents. Local media recently interviewed the granddaughter of a remarkable 102-year-old man, shedding light on the heartwarming story behind a viral video, capturing his first encounter with the sea. Canuck Pitt shared that during a school break, she and her siblings returned to their home from Bangkok and proposed a trip to Rayong, asking their grandfather if he'd like to visit the beach. To their surprise, the grandfather responded, expressing uncertainty about his ability to handle the journey as he had never laid eyes on the sea before. Undeterred, the grandchildren decided to take him to Ao Kai Beach in Rayong province. As they arrived, the grandfather remarked how he initially imagined it similar to the Chao Praya River near their home. However, as he stood before the vast expanse of the sea, he was overcome with awe and slowly waded into the water, his face glowing with pure joy. A young British man, Alexander, sought since last year in Phuket, was apprehended by the Crime Suppression Division officers in Bangkok on May 9th at a condominium near Wat Praia Krai. The arrest stemmed from a warrant issued by the Phuket Provincial Court on August 23rd of last year for allegedly importing false information into a computer system in a manner likely to cause damage to the public. Investigations revealed a dispute in mid-2022 between Alexander, residing in a Phuket apartment, and an Italian restaurant owner over access to the premises. Despite the restaurant offering more convenient access at its expense, Alexander, aggrieved by the advice to refrain from using the route, purportedly retaliated by leaving false one-star reviews on Google. His associates reportedly contributed similar reviews, causing a significant drop in the restaurant ratings. Following a complaint filed by the restaurant owner at Saku Police Station in Phuket, authorities obtained an arrest warrant. However, Alexander had fled to Bangkok, where he was recently apprehended. He denies the charges and awaits prosecution at Saku Police Station in Phuket. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson disclosed that the Department of Provincial Administration has conducted inspections on foreign businesses operating unlawfully in Phuket province to safeguard the rights and benefits of Thai citizens. They uncovered 19 cases of violations involving over 800 rooms. She stated that under the directive of the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Anutan Sharavakul, they conducted investigations and pursued legal actions against those related to the unlawful operations of foreign businesses in Phuket. During inspections, they received information from the Katu District Administration Office that hotels were operating without licenses in areas like Mali Plaza in Patong and other areas. 
Further investigation revealed businesses providing daily room rentals similar to hotels without proper licenses, many managed by foreign nationals. They identified 19 targets comprising of over 800 rooms with legal proceedings to follow. Additionally, certain foreign investor groups violating the law attracted foreign tours from the same countries, impacting local operations and licensed premises. Therefore, the Department of Provincial Administration will collaborate with relevant agencies to address other legal violations, such as building modifications, improper building usage, tax evasion, and money laundering involving expanding investigations and legal actions accordingly. Defence Minister Su Ten Klung Sang announced today that the Thai military is open to purchasing decade-old rice from the rice pledging scheme, provided it undergoes suitability tests for human consumption. He emphasised that the rice would be intended for military personnel and stated that such purchases would support the government by contributing to the country's income. Sutton's statement followed Deputy Prime Minister Pum Tam controversial taste test of the rice, which he claimed was still suitable for consumption despite being stored for 10 years. The rice stored in a warehouse with regular fumigation underwent extensive washing before cooking. However, doubts persist about its quality due to discoloration and the presence of weevils. While acknowledging Pum Tam's assurances to some extent, Sutton suggested additional quality tests for further assurance. He noted that the military had previously purchased crops during the periods of low prices. Former Thai Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra's attempt to facilitate talks between anti-junta opposition groups in Myanmar's civil war has left all parties uneasy, including the Myanmar military junta, according to Irrawaddy Online. Taksin has sought to visit Myanmar for discussions with the junta, but no response has been provided thus far. In March and April, Taksin and his team reportedly met with various revolutionary groups separately, including the Karan National Union, the Kareni National Progressive Party, the Kashin National Organization, the National Unity Government, and the Restoration Council of Shan State. Responding to reports of talks with armed ethnic groups along the Thailand-Myanmar border, Myanmar's government spokesman Zhao Min Tun criticized Taksin's actions, stating that supporting terrorist groups against Myanmar's interests is inappropriate. During discussions with the NUG, Taksin was only able to meet with mid-level officials from the shadow government, despite his wish to engage with its leadership. Now, Ong San Mint, Secretary 2 of the KNPP, disclosed that Taksin expressed an interest in mediating Myanmar's internal conflicts during their meeting. However, no agreement was reached with discussions primarily focusing on humanitarian assistance amidst ongoing fighting. TikTok has taken legal action to challenge a U.S. law threatening to ban the app unless it's divested by its Chinese parent company. In its lawsuit, TikTok contends that the law infringes on its free speech rights and those of 170 million American users, arguing the concerns raised by the U.S. government are speculative and unjustified. President Biden signed the bill into law last month, citing national security reasons amid ongoing debates over TikTok's Chinese ownership and potential data security risks. The filing with the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals asserts that the mandated sale of TikTok is practically and legally unfeasible within the prescribed timeline. TikTok argues that the law unfairly singles out the platform and imposes a disproportionate burden, constituting a two-tiered speech regime. Despite previous attempts to ban TikTok by former President Trump, the company maintains that its investments in addressing U.S. concerns, including data safeguards, demonstrate its commitment to security. While some lawmakers defend the law as necessary for national security, others, including members of Congress and civil liberty advocates, criticize it as an infringement on free speech rights. TikTok's lawsuit challenges the government's ability to impose such a broad ban without evidence of imminent harm to national security. The outcome of this legal battle will have significant implications for the regulation of technology platforms and the ongoing tensions between the US and China. So as we conclude today's episode, I want to invite you to share your thoughts in the comments below. This show isn't just about delivering news, it's about fostering a conversation. Your insights and perspective matter to me. So keep the dialogue alive, like this video, subscribe to our channel and share it with others. Your support means the world to us. 
I'm Kira Mack. You've been tuning in to the Thai Expat Daily Show. Until next time, take care and stay engaged.